Solemn, he can give Wolverine a tough time. Audiences were first introduced to a mutant named Solemn in the Ten of Swords crossover Marvel event that began in the year 2020. He was immediately likened to Wolverine upon introduction, but Solemn was no hero. In the crossover, he is introduced as a sword bearer from a cruel dimension called Arako, and he was quite the match for the much-loved Wolverine and showed exactly how great of a fighter he was all throughout his appearances. This villain is obviously a rather recent addition to the Marvel Universe, but he has made his impact felt due to his various powers, abilities, and skills. Today, we'll be taking a look at how Solemn rose to power and explores personality, abilities, and most important comic book appearances. Clearly, when it comes to good quality and complex villains, Marvel refuses to be left behind. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Rise of Solemn he was created by Benjamin Percy and Victor Bogdanovic, who first appeared in Wolverine V7 No. 6, which was released in October 2020. Solemn's story is filled with hardships ever since he was born in Arako. He was a mutant with adamantium skin, so he stuck out like a sore thumb. However, sadly, when he was quite young, his village got raided by pirates. The raid was conducted by Sever Blackmore, a mutant who was notorious for being a ruthless pirate and crime lord from Arako, otherwise referred to as the Dark Dimension. After the raid was complete, Sever took an interest into the young mutant seeing his shiny skin and took him in despite the fact that he had killed most of Solemn's family and friends. He kept Solemn in prison but the cages and chains were not enough to contain him and seeing this, Sever decided to train young Solemn in the art of war and weaponry. However, being a victim of his circumstances, all Solemn knew was violence and betrayal and thus he too betrayed Sever, sliced his nose off, stole his ship and absconded. This was payback for killing his family all those years ago. However, his streak of violence was not about to stop there. After gaining his freedom, he kept getting into fights and altercations. About a hundred years ago, he was challenged to a fight by a mutant man who lived in Arako named Bracken, and inevitably, due to his superior skills, Solemn won the fight, leaving his wife, War, widowed. Solemn was then locked up in the Tower of Broken Will's Pit as a punishment for the murder of Bracken. It was at this time that Bracken's Hellblade was given to Solemn by Bracken's wife, War, who had hoped that the solitude would drive him insane and that he would kill himself with it. Solemn, on the other hand, was unfazed as he relished the solitude, and other Iraqi, who still lived and admired him, paid him visits and brought him gifts as he stayed there for many years, leaving him wanting for nothing. However, all was not to be well, and Iraqi forces besieged Otherworld, which is a pocket dimension whose people are responsible for guarding the intersection between all realities and happens to be adjacent to Earth. The Iraqi forces attempted to claim it during this time, only to be interrupted by Saturnine, an omniversal majestrix charged with the safekeeping of the entire omniverse, which refers to an infinity of parallel universes. She is notoriously known for being manipulative and deceitful and sticking to her fickle nature, she suggested a battle between Arako and the mutants of Krakoa, a mutant nation which was a seat of major mutant power, to settle things. Ten champions were chosen from each realm, brandishing swords and one of the chosen swordbreakers of Arako was Solemn. He had thus been chosen to fight for his home planet. War and her sister Pestilence were forced to break Solemn out in order to win Saturnine's Ten of Swords challenge because he was one of the chosen individuals. After his release, he was told that he would need a sword, so he showed the Hellblade he'd been given, but he was told that the game required a proper and specific sword, and he had only three days to find one named Muramasa. Made by the immortal madman named Muramasa, whose swordsmanship was stuff of legends, along with the fact that he was an excellent swordsmith. He easily escaped the pit and made his way out to find the prophesied sword, saying that he would catch up with the others of his team in the tournament itself. This set him on the journey that he is today best known for, the quest for Muramasa, during which he encounters Wolverine and his subsequent battles in the contest. The dreaded villain has a charming personality. Solemn was set to favor the more nuanced approach in war. Despite being physically capable of defeating the best of men, Solemn's charm was said to be so strong that he could apparently make a mountain fall in love with him. Both men and women lusted after him, but they also wanted to tear him to pieces. This was his dichotomy. He indulged in his yearning to the point of overindulgence, but keep in mind, those who attempted to harm him were retaliated against in heavy measure. Despite being labeled as evil, his self-proclaimed agenda was pleasure and gamesmanship. He had no commitment except to himself, and he could always be found in places where there was music, flesh, wine, and occasionally blood. It was said that because he developed such dangerous appetites, he ended up drawing the wrath of many others. Despite the fact that he deemed himself to be a kind-hearted poet, he was still a murderer. 
As a result, rather than allowing his inferiors to defeat him, he brutally slaughtered them in challenges. No tight prison or insane amounts of chains could hold him and according to legend, he always managed to get away from tight situations and spaces even as a child. Blackmore had previously stated that Solemn would rather float right through a person's fingers than take a punch. As a result, he was perfectly prepared to lose a firearm rather than risk being captured by a foe. War had thought that while incarcerated, he would either die of despair or be humbled by the experience. He, on the other hand, never felt such emotions and was perfectly content in his cell. Thus, all of this goes to show that Solemn had a wickedly charming personality that made it even more unbearable for the people that lost duels to him or held grudges against him because he was so charming and smug and in many ways extremely cunning and intelligent. A poet and an assassin. Quite the combination it seems. No wonder the ladies and all the menfolk were all swooning over him. Solemn's most important story arc. His most crucial story arc is his pivotal role in the Ten of Swords. He went out to find the prophesied sword because he was chosen as one of the Ten Sword Bearers and thus left free by war. He thus set out on his quest, beginning on the Blind Island in search of the Oracle of Arako who was a seer that supposedly would be able to show him the path. He sought information from the seer on where to locate the Muramasa blade, and in true solemn fashion, he paid for the information with the decapitated head of the seer's sister, who had exiled her to the island. She told him that the goal of his quest was to find the mutant made of metal who would function as his guide in hell, which he could gain entry to with his hellblade. He then discovered the prison cells where his Krakoan equivalent, the mutant named Wolverine, was being held, thus making their fateful encounter. They worked together to obtain Muramasa, the swordsmith's blades, which had been sent to hell, tasked with the duty of serving the hand after they had fully integrated with their malevolent beast master. Muramasa introduced his newly crafted swords from the Hellforge at an infernal marriage officiated by a demon to the two mutants. In order to collect the blades, both Solemn and Wolverine fought the hand. It was during this battle that Solemn's skin was grazed by the sword, drawing blood and a terrible realization dawned upon him. The Muramasa weapons could cut through his adamantium skin. Hence, the sword became one of his biggest weaknesses. Wolverine came under attack during this time by the demon and the demon snatched him up for meddling with the unholy wedding. But Solemn saved him and even gave him the other Muramasa sword as they prepared to fight. This is an important moment since saving Wolverine's life earned him a favor from the X-Man. He said, When I call for you, you will fight for me. And Logan sealed this vow. Then came the all-important tournament itself. He was a member of the Iraqi envoy at the grand tournament that was held in the other world. During this time, a number of battles took place between the Krakoan sword bearers and the Iraqi sword breakers. War's intense animosity with Solemn at the time, due to the loss of her husband, led her to challenge her own team member in order to exact revenge. Solemn was thus pitted against her in the battlefield. However, he was not one to falter in tough circumstances. Remember how we talked about how cunning and intelligent he was? Well, he asked Saturnine who was overseeing the contest to teleport Wolverine to the battlefield to take his place. Once Logan arrived, he asked Logan to fight in his place, making use of the favor Logan owed him back when he had saved Logan. As a result, Wolverine was made to fight war while inebriated from celebrating his victory over the summoner whom he had killed and who incidentally was also War's son. Solemn used this knowledge to divert War's focus away from Wolverine, who was furious at her son's death at the hands of Wolverine. Thus, Wolverine fights war and ultimately wins the battle, winning a point for Solemn and the Araco fighters. What makes him so dangerous? His skin was adamantium enforced, with microfibrous versions of chainmail encircling his entire body. This made him invulnerable to the effects of edged weapons and blades. This meant one very important thing, Wolverine's claws have no effect on him, as is seen in their first hostile encounter. As he tried to attack, Wolverine's claws merely slashed against him, doing no damage at all. Solemn revealed that his skin was adamantium enforced, making him nearly impenetrable with a playful smirk across his face. He refers to it as a microfibrous version of chainmail, while describing it to Logan implying that it wasn't a natural part of his body. Wolverine's strike did not even cut through Solemn's shirt, implying that it was more of an armor than a mutation, albeit a mutation that carried great power. The magically created Mermasa blades, on the other hand, were a weapon capable of piercing through his skin and injuring him. He was also coached in the functioning of a ship as part of Sever Blackmore's crew before having to learn to be an assassin, where he was a crook, a smuggler, and a raider. He was given the Hillblade of War's husband, who had been killed by Solemn over a century ago. War had hoped that he would use it to commit suicide while incarcerated, but he kept it hidden because he didn't want to damn himself and he never felt desperate enough to use it. 
The blade was said to send anyone who was struck by it straight to hell, and it could also be used as a key to access the entrance to hell, an immense power. Solomus proved that he could be as destructive as any of the original first horsemen thanks to his proven combat skills. In fact, his armor and weaponry may be able to put Wolverine at a vulnerable position in battle, as his claws are useless against him, leaving the two to fight with their Muramasa blades. But with the Hellblade at his disposal, Solomon might even be able to get out of the fight unscathed if things get out of hand. Solomon has quickly established himself as a very real and very dangerous threat among all the sword bearers of Arako that were already introduced by the time he came around. As we come to the end of the video, it is important to note that Solomon was only a small child when he was kidnapped by Sever Blackmore, who had come to recruit him into his crew after realizing that Solomon was special. During that time, he watched him mature into an accomplished warrior and assume the role of Solomon's tutor for the same. He later discovered, however, that he had been duped by the boy he had taken under his wing for quite some time. In the end, Sever couldn't tell if he had created the evil in Solom or if he had simply released what was already present in him as a child. However, he did grow up to be an excellent warrior who was strong enough to pose a threat to some of the strongest mutants in the Marvel Universe. What do you think about Solom? Was he a victim of his circumstances? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.